Let's start by making the UFO vulnerable to our laser fire. So let's open the object player laser. And the UFO is going to behave similarly to the asteroid small collision. So let's just duplicate this, make it a collision with the object UFO. We need to make some adjustments. First, we want to change the UFO into an object large explosion. We also want to get rid of this alarm because this is resetting the alarm for the object scorekeeper since the UFO has no bearing whatsoever on the end of the game we can just get rid of it and what we're going to do instead is we're going to go through our UFO time reset and reset the spawn so let's come to control test variable and drag that above the score and we are going to test for global dot UFO time being greater than 100. If it is, then we want to set variable, set global dot UFO time to minus 100 relative. And then we need to reset the spawner's alarm. So main 2, set alarm. Have this applied to the object spawner. Alarm 0 equal to global dot UFO time. And make sure this is above the score. We're also going to make the UFOs worth a lot more points. So instead of 100, I'm going to make it 500. This is going to give us a lot of extra lives since we have extra lives set to every 1,000 points. So again, in the final game, you probably want to set this to 10,000 or so. So now we can shoot the UFO. Let's make the UFO crash into asteroids. So close the laser and reopen the object UFO. While we're at it, let's open up the object player because this collision is going to be very similar to the player's large asteroid collision. In fact, let's just go ahead and select everything here. Copy. Come back to our object UFO. Add event. Collision asteroid large and paste everything in it. We can get rid of this set lives relative to minus one because when a UFO dies we don't want it affecting our lives. We can also remove this set alarm for the scorekeeper and so when it crashes into an asteroid the asteroid will create four small asteroids but the UFO will be destroyed and so we need to reset our UFO time spawner. I'm just gonna come to our outside room and select the test UFO time, set UFO time, and set alarm. And we'll just copy those, come back to the collision, and above this change instance, I will paste it in. Now let's create the collision for the small asteroid. We'll come back to our object player, select its collision with the small asteroid, select everything, copy, come back to the object UFO, add event, collision, small asteroid, paste everything. Again, we can get rid of the lives. But this time we do want to keep the object scorekeeper. It's just that we don't want it to be alarm 1, we want it to be alarm 0. Because this is going to test to see if the UFO has crashed into the last asteroid, which will still count as a victory for us. So we're going to set this to alarm 0 and give it 5 steps. And then finally, we need to reset our UFO time. So let's come back to the outside room, reselect these three, copy them, come back to small, and right above the change instance, paste them in. So let's go ahead and see our vulnerable UFOs. Okay, here's a UFO, it's on a collision course for that asteroid, blows the asteroid into pieces. It should hit one of these, there's a lot of them, okay, it just did. And now let's see what happens. Okay, and we just had it run into the last asteroid, which made us win the game. So a very complicated part of the game is done now. Unfortunately, we now have to go revisit our asteroids. 
In the original game, the asteroids were put on screen in a random location, and each level there would be more of them. So in the next video, we're going to tweak our spawner so that it will keep track of the level we're on and randomly bring in asteroids with each new level.